Get a promotion. Write a book. Lose weight. Finish that degree. These are all common New Year's resolutions, but what fun are they if they don't include a dog? Well, don't worry. We have created some dog-friendly resolutions for you. On today's episode, New Year's resolutions that you can do with your dog. Hello, I'm James Jacobson in Maui, Hawaii. And I'm Claire Mansell in London, England. Welcome to Dog Edition. Where voices from around the world consider all things dog. Dog Edition is the first show designed for you to listen to while you walk your dogs. Today on the show, New Year's resolutions. But don't worry, we won't be telling you how to lose weight or finally finish your very long home repair list. No, no, no. We have something much more interesting than that. Instead, we've come up with some very creative ways to include dogs in your New Year's resolutions. So if you love dogs as much as we do, pause what you're doing, leash up your pup, and let's go for a walk. Because we've got a lot to talk about on this New Year's episode of Dog Edition. Hey Pepper, want to go for a walk? Happy New Year. It's been a pretty crazy few years, Jim, hasn't it? And maybe, maybe next year will be the start <laughs> of less craziness. I feel good about 2023. Do I you? I feel really good about 20. I always do. At the beginning of the year, you feel optimistic. I feel a lot optimistic. I think this is going to be an incredibly cool year and uh, a lot going on. And we are maybe turning a corner. You know, at the end of 2019, I bought a desk diary. You don't you don't say diary. You mean, do, do you have desk calendars? Journal. Uh, journal, planner, journal. Yeah, planner, yeah, yeah, yeah. For 2020. And on the front of it, it said... <laughs> Best year ever. Mm. So I'm not going to make any predictions about 2023. I like your optimism, but I'm going to stay away from any making any bold statements about it. <laughs> well, I, I've been keeping journals my entire life. I do a journal every morning, almost throughout my life. And uh, in the beginning of the year, when I when I start, when I wrote with God's help, which is always applicable, mm. Mm, <laughs> helps me get through, no, through through the year, whatever happens. But I'm feeling good about 2023. And of course, the start of a new year is always tempting to look forward and think of resolutions, whether mm -hmm. you think resolutions are rubbish things. We all make them on some level, don't we? We always right. look forward to the future and think, what will we do differently this year? So we went to dog parks around the world to ask people if their dogs could make resolutions, what would they be? Eat more food, get more ice cream, double up on my bones. Oh, so the dog that I have definitely would need to get some more steps in. She just eats treats and is lazy. I mean, she's not obscenely overweight, but she's a little thick. Be more active. <laughs> Nap more, eat more bacon, and probably hang out with small dogs less. I just like nap more, eat more bacon. Yeah. I like nap more, eat more bacon. I'm not sure about staying away from little dogs because <laughs> <clears throat> I'm fostering one. But yes, I, I definitely like nap more, eat more bacon. And I can understand the world through the eyes of a dog. But today we're not talking about just the eyes of a dog. We're talking about what we can do with our dogs. And it's funny as well, because I think a lot of people's resolutions each year revolve around food, but usually about eating a better diet or eating less of certain things. And I think most dogs, if you gave them a resolution, would be looking at increasing their intake of bones and ice cream and treats, which is definitely a better way of looking at things. I think so too, but you're definitely on to something. According to Statistica Research, here in the United States, 23% of Americans wanted to start 2022 by living healthier, which is the most popular New Year's resolution. Wow. So does that mean that for this episode, we're finally going to tackle the subject of what is the healthiest diet to feed your dog? Yes, we know, Claire, we would never do that on Dog <laughs> Edition. That is way too controversial because there are so many different perspectives and we would have to do an in-depth documentary that would go many months to tackle the best food for your dog. Between raw diets and grain-free diets and feast and famine or free food diets, vegan diets or vegetarian diets, we're not going to get into that kind of debate today. But what we have done is come up with some really creative twists on common New Year's resolutions that you can do with your dog. 
And the first one is to take better care of you and your dog's health. I like that one. I think we can all agree with that one. I know with the stresses of the last year and mm, the previous year as well. And oh, hang on, the year before that wasn't particularly yeah, we, great. We got to go back too many years to figure this out. That, that's this chunk that we've all been through. Yes, absolutely. I know that I wasn't always as healthy as I should have been this year, particularly for the chunk of time in August when I had COVID. And in fact, you can go back into the archives and noticeably hear the episode where I had COVID, but we just hadn't tested positive yet. Anyway, so I stopped running during that period of time and there's a big slump on my activity level. And so I know I wasn't the best that I could have been. And that's much like 23% of Americans who admit that they haven't been as healthy as they should have been in the last year. And that is why as we move into 2023, we want to focus on our dog's health and doing everything we can to do to make it better. So it goes without saying that pets and dogs in particular have a really great impact on our mental health. But what is also important to factor in is that our pet's health also directly impacts our health. So really, human health and pet health are one and the same. I recently spoke with Michael Blackwell, and we have the full conversation on the long leash. We'll have a link to that. He is with Align Care, which is a One Health interprofessional system that is meant to improve the access to veterinary care for families with limited means. Dr. Blackwell believes that if you want to improve the health of people in general, their pets must have access to health care as well. It's a new paradigm. It basically says that in order to improve health outcomes, let's say for population of people, one needs to also factor in animals and their shared environment. So all three of these need to be looked at and considered when trying to improve the health outcomes for humans. Dr. Blackwell knows a thing or two about health. He had served in the United States government for 23 years of public service. His highest rank was assistant surgeon general for the United States. He achieved the rank of rear admiral for the U.S. Public Service Health Corps. And he is also serving as the director of the program for pet health equity at the University of Tennessee. And that led to the work that he is doing with Align Care. He is a busy man. He is. Throughout all his time working in the world of health, Dr. Blackwell has learned that the emotional connections we have with our pets can directly affect our mental and physical health. Unfortunately, though, the cost of vet care can be a serious problem. We conducted a national study. It was reported on in December 2018. We wanted to understand what are the barriers that pet owners are facing, and frankly, how large is the problem? What we learned was that 28%, so more than one out of four families, reported a barrier to veterinary care. And there were multiple reasons, but the overwhelming one was a lack of ability to pay for the care. The tragic reality is that some families lose a beloved pet simply because they cannot afford the cost of veterinary treatment. So there are lots of things that you can do to improve your pet's health, but with the expensive cost of vet care and the chance of accidents happening, make sure that you have pet insurance. We think that is one of the strongest things that you can do so that you have the financial reserves in case the unexpected happens. And it's one of those things where hindsight is really 2020, and many people don't think about getting insurance until it's too late and you have the large vet bill. You know, that is true. Another conversation that I had with another veterinarian, Dr. Marty Becker, uh, talked about the importance of teeth cleaning. He said that one of the most important things that you can do for a new dog or any dog is to make sure that you clean their teeth, which is kind of a little tough because most veterinary insurance doesn't even cover that. So if you do preventative stuff at home and ideally with a young dog, it's a little bit easier to get them used to it. That's one of the things that you can do for your dog. So if you have a young dog or you have the patience to do this with an old dog, we recommend getting your dog's teeth cleaned. It doesn't have to be a big ordeal. There are links to how to do that in the show notes. And Jim, when you said if you have a young dog, you were literally, literally looking at me. 
<laughs> I was. So, so, okay, I'm taking this away. That's obviously the second time I've heard that. And the first time I was like, I really need to start doing this with Maple. And okay, so that's my New Year's resolution. We will start sorting out her teeth. We do do the chews that are good for their teeth. The chews are good. And anything that kind of gets the tartar away from the teeth. and But it, it can have some really bad effects because dental health can go to other parts of the body in a real bad way. Yeah. And if you do it early, they can get used to it. And so that's one of the most important chunks of advice that we get from veterinarians. And here's a, a little bit of research that we dug up. According to the American Veterinary Dental College, it is estimated that the majority of dogs show signs of canine periodontal disease by age three. So start early. So another common resolution is to learn a new language. And surprisingly, that is something you can do with your dog as well. Like teaching your dog to sit in Spanish or German? Well, not exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was thinking um, more along the lines of teaching your dog to communicate with you. And it can be as easy as pushing a button. That was easy. Of course, talking buttons. We won't talk about polygots because there is a thing. You can actually get dogs to learn different languages, but it's a little bit easier if you use some technology, one of those talking buttons. Yeah, one of our producers has started training with these buttons last year and they seem very effective. And we started just before we left Canada, but then when it was like, oh, we can't start this and then we're moving house and it'll get complicated and we sort of haven't resumed it. So I've also got to add that to my list. This is becoming a long list, but I do now have two resolutions. We'll go back to using the buttons because they are brilliant. They are very cool. There are a number of different companies that make those buttons. One of the most popular ones is one called Fluent Pet. We spoke with its founder, Leo Trottier. Fluent Pet is a system of hex tiles. There are these kind of pads that are hexagonal. They are puzzle pieces that connect together. And in them, you can put sound buttons. So when you press them, out comes a word that you've recorded into them. I think one of the cool things is if you can use the buttons to get your dog to express what it wants, like I mm. want to go out and go for a walk, or I want that delicious dinner you served me last night, or, you know, just to be able to communicate using buttons is pretty cool, I think. I mean, absolutely. One of the examples I've heard is of a dog who was able to talk about which walk it wanted to go on because there was a park or a beach walk. Mm -hmm. And it was actually able to say on any given day which one it wanted, which is great, isn't it? I want to go on the river walk today and today I want to go through the forest. That's very cool. Now, one of the uh, great examples of dogs being able to express themselves is one who learned to ask for a very specific treat. We've seen a dog who really likes ice cubes, who knew the word for bone and who knew the word for water, like say water bone, and then expect an ice cube. That's amazing. Now, of course, people often think about using it with puppies and young dogs, but is it something that you can use with older dogs as well? We have seen a lot of old dogs and cats see success with the buttons. So you know the old saying, Claire, that you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Well, <laughs> that does not seem to be true. And teaching older dogs might actually be a good way to keep them healthier mentally for longer. We spoke with Dr. Claudia Fugaza, who is a researcher at the University of Budapest, and she studies memory in dogs. All dogs could benefit from it is that it is not an activity which requires a lot of physical effort. It doesn't require uh, them to use their body in a way that could be maybe painful for an old dog. Like, I don't know, if a dog has always done agility, maybe when he gets a little older, that's not the best activity to do with a dog, but does not require physical efforts, but it keeps their mind very active. And uh, it seems also from research that keeping dogs exercised and doing things can help them aging healthier. Dr. Fugaza is one of the researchers behind the Dog Genius Project, which is an online initiative to find dogs that are able to memorize the names of toys. And some dogs are able to learn over 50 names of different toys. It's a really cool project. If you want to learn more about Dr. Fugaza's work, we had a great conversation with her on The Long Leash, and we will include a link to that in today's show notes. 
She says that though older dogs may not have the mental flexibility of growing puppies, they are just as capable of learning and can be even more important to keep introducing them to new mental stimulus like buttons. We are going to take a quick break right here, but when we come back, more with our New Year's resolutions that you can do with your dog. We'll be right back. And now, a message from your dog. Every day with you is like a day at the beach, and I want as many beach days as possible. I want to run and sniff and find a good stick to carry. I want to roll in the grass and warm my belly in the sun. I want to walk with you, run with you, sleep with you, eat with you. And when I eat with you, I want Everpuff. The green, grassy, beef liver spike smell wakes my senses. You may not realize this, but it tastes like homemade gravy, especially when you wet it. It infuses any food you give me with health and life and vibrancy. I can feel it, Everpuff, traveling to every cell in my body, nourishing each one. It helps me feel like I'm on top of the world. I'm so glad you're giving it to me every day because every day I'm so glad to be with you. I wouldn't have it any other way. I want my Everpup. It just makes me feel good. I am so grateful to be your dog and for the Everpup you give me. So now that you know what your dog wants, get Everpup, the ultimate dog supplement. Everpup is available in select pet shops and on Amazon. But to get the best price possible, join the Everpup Club at everpupclub.com, where you'll get your first jar for just $8 with free shipping anywhere in the U.S. Go to everpupclub.com and use the discount code DPN. That is everpupclub.com. Everpup every day. Welcome back to Dog Edition. Jim, you strike me as someone who's quite well read, although I don't know how you fit books into your busy schedule. Are you a big reader? <laughs> well, I like to uh, read books while I walk. Of course, that's talking about audiobooks and podcasts. But yeah, I do I do like to keep up with the, the newest books and some old titles. And then there are some wonderful services now that will synthesize a whole book hundreds of pages into like a 15 minute presentation. That way I get to keep up to speed on the latest. It's my little tip. Yeah. I listened to one like that actually. And it's, it's very clever. It condenses it all the key points of the book. Yeah. Is it a company, a Germany company called Blinkist? Yes. So yeah, that's, that's the okay, one. Okay. So we both, you, you know, you should be a sponsor on our show. Blinkist. <laughs> uh, they're not, but I didn't realize that you use that as well. It's a really cool service if you are going for a walk. And after, of course, you've listened to all the dog editions, because this is the show to listen to while you walk your dogs. If you're looking for something else, that's not a podcast. Blinkist is really cool because you can catch up on your reading. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, I'm currently listening to an audio book that's 18 hours long and I really wish I had gone for the Blinkist version of it. But that's another thing <laughs> entirely. Well, one of the common New Year's resolutions that people make is to read more books. But how do you read more books with your dogs? Now, it might take quite a while working with those buttons before your dog can read as well. But we... <laughs> found some really fun interactive books. Jim, have you ever heard of the book Wreck This Journal? Wreck This Journal? No, I don't think so. <laughs> it's like a, a fun sort of interactive um, thing that you can do. It's like a notebook, but it's got activities in it and stuff. It's very cool. And they now have a canine version of it, <laughs> which is called Chew This Book. And that's <sighs> for you to do with your dog. No, chew this book. That's awesome. What are some of the things you can do? Here is Sassafras Lowry, the book's author. So there's all kinds of crafts to, to tricks, to games, to parkour challenges, and that kind of dovetail into enrichment games. And one of them is paw print flowers. So you're using non-toxic ink pads or stamps, which is also a really great way to work with your dog on being comfortable with being handled for things like nail trims and vet visits, but in a fun way. I love the idea of these interactive books as well, because it is, you know, great stimulation for the dog. It's sort of, I guess, a modern day version of Mad Libs that I used to do when I was a kid on the bus. Remember those, Claire? Do you remember? You don't remember Mad Libs? <laughs> no, I think that might have been an American Probably thing. Probably not something in the UK. Okay, anyway, it's a, you know, the interactivity is really cool. And I guess we're also stuck on like doing interactive things on our phones. It's nice to have some interactivity in 
an old medium, an old school medium like books. Even the, the little scratch off things, the sniff things that we used to do as kids. I love those. <laughs> I think being interactive with our books is great. Yeah, and we all love getting cozy with a nice book as well. But another great goal for 2023 is... When you've had your cozy time inside reading your book, is to get outside more often. Mm. And although we can't all live in a tropical place all year round, getting outdoors in the fresh air, no matter the temperature, is good for you and your dog. Absolutely. Getting outside with your dog is, is one of the best things you can do for both your dog and for you. And I like to start my days when I possibly can on a beach walk with, with my pup. And uh, it really is a wonderful thing. It's something that dogs do look forward to. So you don't always have to do it in the warm weather. You can do it in the cold weather, like like you're in right now, Claire. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, um, as you know, my dog is a golden retriever and she's what they call a field golden. So she's she's bred for working. So mm -hmm. she's more athletic than standard golden retrievers. Of course. She's got a lot of energy and she needs to burn that off. So I take her running with me and actually we're doing a race next year as well, a canny cross race, which is like cross country with dogs. While researching this, we found a lot of races that you can participate in with your dog all over the world. But one that was of particular note was one that happens every year in October in Tennessee. And what's unique about it is it adds a new dimension of color. I'm Randy Drew. I'm the founder of a private foundation called PARC, P-A-R-C foundation and park we started color me mutt in 2007 it's a color run with people and their pets it's cornstarch it's a food product and it's color different colors and as the runners come by they signal throwing theme if you will if they want color or if they don't want you know they throw it in the air and the runners run through it and they come back all multicolor and if they're running with their pet, their pet is multicolor and it's great. We do have a similar thing in the UK, but sadly not with the dogs. So I'm a bit envious of the fact that they have Color Me Mutt. We have the just straightforward color on here. And, you know, in all this beautiful paint powder and it, it's just beautiful. The photos that people get afterwards, it's just crazy. It's like a mud run, but more beautiful. And if you don't live in Tennessee, and if you don't want to go to Tennessee in October, although it is beautiful then, <laughs> then you can do it from wherever you are because they have a way to participate virtually. They will send you some color so that you can participate wherever you are. And our last resolution is something that I think we will all find very easy to do, which is to spend more time with your dog. Find a new activity or something that you really enjoy doing with your dog. For me, Claire, it's meditating with your dog. Now, I have, as you know, this foster that everyone here on our team thinks is going to be a foster fail, but a foster <laughs> dog that we are housing for a while and, and trying to rehabilitate in some interesting ways. Yeah. And she could be a foster fail, but I don't want to commit to that. Anyway, one of the things that is helping me have my heart melted is Chloe has decided that she wants to join me while I meditate. And, <gasps> you know, I wrote a book years ago called How to Meditate with Your Dog, which kind of started all of this. And the fact that she jumped into my lap while I was meditating reminded me of the first dog that inspired that book and reminded me of every dog I've had since. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you have to introduce them to it. Chloe naturally <laughs> took to it. So I recommend you do that. And you can actually find out about how to do that. There's a link in the show notes, but it's a, it's a cool thing that I do and it really does work and it does build this connection between you and your dog. So that's quality time that I spend every day right before I journal. What are you gonna do, Claire, in 2023? <laughs> I don't know how you fit it all in between listening to the Blinkist books and <laughs> journaling and meditating with your dog and everything else that you do. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, and I do also, a couple of other things too, yeah. <laughs> um, I have to say, every time I see Chloe, she looks so chilled. She does seem to be a natural meditator. So, you know, I don't, I don't think she's even doing it deliberately to wrap you around her finger. I just think she's just that way inclined. She's just really chilled. Which is funny because when she came here, she was a high anxiety case. So just maybe good food, 
being in a calm environment and being around some meditation energy made the difference. But yeah, she's a different dog and she's only been here several weeks. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, Now, talking of spending quality time with your dog, I was away for a weekend for the first time away from Maple. And I actually really missed her, really Mm. missed her. And when I came home, she went crazy because you hadn't seen me for 48 hours. (laughs) So, yeah, spending quality time. And she knew you were outside of the country. You travelled from the UK to France. Yeah, if if she'd known that, then I think she would have gone crazy. (laughs) But, yeah, spending quality time, I think I'm just never allowed to leave the house again without her for any length of time. So I I just have to be here all the time to spend quality time with her. That's, That's it. I think that is one of the things as we move into 2023 and people are starting to resume, you know, less work from home, although we get to do that. I think dogs are going to be missing us. So finding Mm. deliberate ways, whether it's that, you know, 10 or 15 minutes in the morning meditating with your dog or going on that special walk or spending a little extra time is a good commitment to confirm that, you know, connection that you have with your dog. Absolutely. So that's a really good New Year's resolution that I think we can all agree to. And I suspect of all the New Year's resolutions, that might be the one that is easiest for anyone listening to the show. (laughs) I think you're right. Absolutely. Way easier than cleaning your dog's teeth. (laughs) Well, that is all the time we have for today's episode. I want to thank you for joining us today and bringing us along on your walk. Don't forget, I always say it, but it's very important. Follow Dog Edition in your favourite podcast app. Check out our sister shows, including The Long Leash with James Jacobson at dogpodcastnetwork.com. And if you want to help us grow, then please tell a friend or a fellow dog lover about the show. I'm Claire Mansell. And I'm James Jacobson from all of us here at Dog Podcast Network. I'd like to wish you and your dog a very warm aloha. Aloha.